first of all, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor to have you here and really appreciate it. Thank so, you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So to begin with, I think the, the question that uh, first occurred to me when I uh, first learned about you, Sixto Rodriguez. That's my full name, yes. Where does the Sixto come from? Uh, well, my, I asked my father the same question, and, and he said my mother named me, so I, and, and, uh, so yeah. And you have, are you, do you have several, a lot of siblings, right? Uh, yes, yes, I have. And the thing is, uh, uh, my mother and father both Mexican. I was born and born in Detroit. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if you remember the first time you tried something musical. Do you remember, was there, was there some incident that you can recall? Well, I've been chasing music since I was 16. And that's, you know, it's a family instrument. And, and you, that's how I, I, it was, I was exposed to music. I, I, Spanish is my first language, you know, that's what I heard, and I, I, the, music, the guitar itself uh, has been the center of the music ensemble for the last 40 years at least, you know, in rock, anyway, uh, 50 years, anyway, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I appreciate what comes out of it, and, and it's all in there, you know, all the different styles of it, so uh, I love music. Was there a moment when you realized that you were talented? I mean, a lot of people like music, uh, not many people are, are as, as uh, good well, as you. Well, no, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's all practice. It, it's uh, a re-practice. And I, I feel that I, you know, I've accomplished some kind of uh, uh, dexterity with, with the instrument. But you, it's an uh, all, uh, ever-learning thing. It's, you know, you always, as anybody would know, uh, once a student is always a student, you know, so um, yeah. And your way in was the guitar, but when did it sort of become clear what your strengths were in uh, music? Well, I like uh, that it's lightweight, <laughs> and I, and that other artists have to come up with a uh, you know a large. I only have to come up with a three minute song, and so I thought that was pretty. And I and I always saw music as I well an explanation. Uh, we do music. Uh, musicians do music for the girls. <laughs> we, uh, we do music for the money. You know, we do music for the you know recognition for the rock and roll history. But we also do it because it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a pleasure to do music. It's a living art form. Uh, I just do some doing performances with other musicians, or and it's it's uh, it's not a spectator sport in that it, you can participate by singing to it, dancing to it, playing an instrument, so a group, uh, whatever. It's uh, so it has a lot of value. I feel when you were starting out uh, mm -hmm. as a as a young musician, what for you was the dream? What would be what was oh. the ultimate thing? I would, well, I was going to get picked up by a label, of course, but I, I, I was going to sell more records, get, play bigger rooms, you know, and that was as far as I could think of at the time, so it's quite something else now. And, and for people who uh, don't know necessarily, I mean, can you tell about how that first record deal, that dream of oh. so many young musicians, it, it came true for you. How did that come about even? Well, I, I think, oh, the, 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 the path. <laughs> yes. Yes, I think that, well... I feel that any musician, anyone who starts to pick up an instrument, that he or she recreates all of music, and that through them, it's the process of it. So, like that, and that's how you, with me, you get better guitars, you know, as you go along, and you learn more chords, you, you, and a lot of practice, you have to be in tune. I think if you stay in tune, then you can play with any musician on earth, you know. So that kind of thing, that kind of, so it's that, Kind of career. Okay, I was. My career has been a lot of. I'd like you to meet. I'd like you to meet introductions from one, and being in those places that uh, people assemble at in the music scenes. So, but, but I, I, I'm yeah. sorry. No, please, please. No, but I gave it up after '74, and not thinking it was going anywhere, after being with the label, and and uh, and so like that. That's how I started out. But on one label, that that it's an intro to another, and like that. That's. The, well, if we can pause for one second, because sure. before we even go to the, the period when you sort of gave it up. But that's uh, where I started, yeah. I, I want to ask, though, when you first, when you first did get um, signed to a label, was that the result of you had been playing clubs or cabarets yeah. or things and yes. somebody heard you? Yes, exactly. Uh, mingling with other musicians. And, and the word goes around. Actually, I feel the music scene is a small uh, world. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, it's not as, you know, a small group of people that run the, the music scene or are involved in it in a serious manner, you know. I mean, there's a lot of kids who do music, and, uh, and, and so... Now, the, the, the people who uh, today talk about when they first heard your music back 
back then in the 70s uh, say that they that you reminded them of Dylan of mm. other people you have a very mm. distinct voice even talking to you it's a very uh, you know kind of soothing uh, mellow oh, voice geez. it's amazing oh thanks uh, uh, well I think that uh, you know when they mention uh, I call them vocals uh, I think to develop a vocal signature is what uh, you know once you hear Sinatra you know that Sinatra so to get that identifiable uh, uh, voice or si vocal signature, that that's when you got kind of at least so you remember. Oh, that's that vocal. That or in a, in a visual of the film, the star who of a show, his visual. That, oh, that's he was in that other movie or something. You know, right. that kind of, the vocal signature. But I think when you achieve that, in a sense, you have reached your market, uh, or are reaching your market. Yeah. So before you went into this hiatus, what were the songs that you were proudest of? What, what oh. of your music were you most pleased with? Well, this, uh, I, I can write a ballad. You know, there it's, it's a composition. It has a uh, chorus verse. It has, a, you know, it has structure. And so I can write that. And, uh, <clears throat> but I use this, the, 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 uh, the protest song of the folk music, so, so to speak, as a vehicle to, to talk about social issues. And so that, uh, that's the difference, I think. I love the Woody Guthrie tradition about speaking about th what's happening to the country and what's actual. And so through, through music that way, I think he awakened a lot of people. And, and so which And of still does. Oh, his, yeah. his vocals run true. And his, his sign vocal signature and, and certainly his poetry uh, run true today. And so, that, uh, and so to the, the 70s and 60s writers. Okay, so now tell me what happened mm -hmm. in 72 that led you to... Uh, oh, well, I had recorded two, two albums, uh, uh, Coming From Reality and, and Cold Fact, with the titles, and they didn't happen, and so I, uh, I stayed around to like 74, and then I, I dropped out of the music scene, but not, a, not out of music, uh, just the, the, where everybody hangs out and all that type of thing, you know, and so... Uh, and then I just went back to work, actually, and so that's what I did. Was it was it kind of heartbreaking to oh. feel that it was gone away? Yeah, I was too disappointed to be disappointed. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. In that sense, you in the film I say nothing beats reality. I think that's pretty much for all of us and for everyone. You know, at some point you make decisions. Right. Yeah. Um, so when you left the music scene and started working, what kind of work did you pursue? Well, I, I demolition. I, I'm hard working class, and I. I what I do is take the walls and the ceilings and the floors and the wiring everything out and prepare it for the carpenters and the plumbers and the electricians and the you know fine tuning. The, but that's what I do: re renovation, restoration of homes and residences, which still can be used for like uh, habitats for humanity. Uh, Carter's idea of, of housing. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of value in some of these structures, and and they can be redone and and. Uh, uh, rebuilt, uh, etc. Well, it's it's interesting because people who worked with you, who were inter interviewed for uh, other purposes, the film and other things, have said that you brought that same sense of purpose and commitment to well, your work that you did. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, you get yeah. Well, that's uh, that's, that's well, you gotta give it what you can. You know, I guess. During the years between seventy two and the sort of rebirth, did you play music for fun, just for your own pleasure? Oh. Uh, I did have two tours of Australia, 79, 81, and those were 25, 30 day tours. And then I thought that was a highlight. You know, I had recorded, and here someone else had picked it up. And later I found out that the music had been bootlegged to Australia from South Africa. So in, tra in the trail of this, uh, uh, it was South Africa who was uh, agitated. You know, they used the music. So you were still involved, and you were there was a certain segment of people that still uh, were appreciative of what you were doing in in South Africa. But even even in Australia. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. A, 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 so to speak a hippie community there. Is, you know, <laughs> they have a again another area that uh, it's, it's I call them uh, virgin territories, and that a lot of people haven't been there, but they're it's beautiful areas. So you mentioned uh, South Africa, and so I have to ask you, what did you know about South Africa oh, before this all happened? And not much, really. I, I um, knew about the boycott, and I knew about the economic sanctions about to South Africa. But that's a, I knew about Burko, Bilko, mm -hmm. and I knew about uh, Soweto and, and Sharpsville. 
but the depth of that, I didn't know, the government repression, yeah. which was echoed here in, at Kent State or at uh, some of these things that occurred in the United States where the, uh, the young bloods were burning the draft cards, resisting the draft, going to Canada. And there they served and defended the country in Angola and in Namibia, as I learned. And they would exchange cassettes of the music, the soldiers would, and that's how it started out. So, so that's the, that's how I understand it happened. And just uh, before we go on with that, sure. what, how would you characterize your own political views? Oh, I, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, um, <laughs> no, I, I mean the question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, let's see. I describe myself as a musical political. Mm -hmm. Seeing that, I think that is a phrase. So when you said the yes, because I am political in that sense, uh, I, I have a uh, I'm a worker bee in that I if it's broke, it's fix it. If it, how, you know, I, that kind of mentality. If it's something broken, fix it. You know. So I see this thing in Congress, and I and then guys can't do it. <laughs> they get so far, and it's it's stagnation, mm -hmm. political stagnation. So I feel women should run for office take leadership roles in government, and, and, and they've been proven to be smarter. And uh, more women voters, there's more women in the services. And so I feel that, and why wait any longer about it? And the 70s were for women's rights. Uh, all those things came out. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, and now they're trying to take us back. And, and every 20 years, there's a new crop of young bloods who don't know that history. And that's, so I'm a solid 70, and I can, uh, at least give them a heads up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I guess, how did you first find out that people were looking for you? Oh, okay. Uh, there was a... Uh, Sh Seegerman Sugar, as he prefers to be called. Mm -hmm. So Sugar came to my house in Detroit. Uh, he was in New York at the time. He is from Cape Town, and he came and showed me the CD, and he said, look at it. And he just described this fan base I had and all this, and... Uh, and two years later, in '98, I I went and toured, and I, I toured uh, 5,000 seaters, and uh, sold out uh, these places, and, and uh, so that's when I turned up. But it was uh, his curiosity. But uh, how did Sugar even, you know, how, oh, did, how did Sugar track you down? I know. Well, well let me let me let's not right. Way. We're gonna let me rephrase because that we don't want to we don't want to no, no, take excellent. away from that. But excellent. I mean, when how did that's, you first find fine. out that Sugar? The sugar called you up before he showed up at your yeah, house? Yeah, uh, through Eva. My, my, I have three daughters. Yes. Eva, Sandra, and Reagan. And, uh, and through them, I, I get information because they're, they're 21st century people. And right. the thing is, uh, so Eva got it through the Internet. And in and, and, and 96, or just in that area where the Internet was just starting out, and just blossoming out. And so that's how I learned about it. And then I, we exchanged phone numbers and... and uh, and then I called him. Yeah. Could you believe it, or did you have to see it when you got to South Africa to believe it? Seeing is believing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, but the vista's there. It's just uh, gorgeous. Uh, it's a beautiful country, gorgeous people. And the thing is, they, uh, so yeah, we were so well treated. It's, uh, yes. Well, and I, I, I mentioned to you briefly before mm -hmm. that, I am the son of a South African. Uh -huh. And I have a lot of family that's still there. Uh, and I have to tell you, though, my mom... I don't think she would recognize necessarily Paul McCartney if he walked into her, but she knows Rodriguez. Oh, thank and you. so I wonder, uh, <laughs> I wonder actually appropriate <laughs> phrasing, but um, you know, did it, did it just blow your mind to oh, see the, the love these people had for you? It, it blew my mind. Yeah. Like, that's a very real phrase from this time period. Yeah, it was, it was mind blowing. It was uh, to, to see all that audience and the young bloods and the thing is that uh, Afrikaans are my fan base, as mm -hmm. I've learned, but uh, <coughs> we have a global audience, you know, and so uh, Australia, I have to mention that, because they also toured me first. Mm -hmm. They were there f touring me first, so all, all well and good, you know. And uh, now, this must have sort of shaken up your life a little bit, because here oh, you are, you're exactly. working, you're going about your life, and now all of a sudden you find out you've got a, a, a new career if you uh, want it. Yes, uh, there it is, and yeah. So, so since '98 we've been touring, and and now it's brought us here to LA. This is Sundance uh, Film Festival brought out our film, and and and, uh, and actually it's Malik Benjaloo's film. He's won awards for this. He's traveled to Moscow, Australia, uh, England, uh, promoting his film, uh, Czech Republic. He's been tireless in in promoting his, his the film and winning awards with it. And 
but it's been a lot of wear and tear on his. But through his film, uh, Searching for Sugar Man, it's exciting my music career. Now, did you and Malik immediately head it off? I mean, how did he first approach <laughs> you? He hit it off. Uh, well, it's like any relationship, I think, you know. Uh, but this is a, a. I'm more audio, and he's visual in the sense of. Uh, He's, he's been in television, yeah, he was a child actor, he was, so his, and they came to Detroit, to him and his film crew, and, and so in February, and filming, and so I got involved in it, but I was skeptical at, at the beginning, for sure. What were you I concerned did, about? Well, no, uh, eliminate the, uh, the certain parts of the story, because the story climaxes in 1998. I meet Malik Benjalou in 08. Well, Malik Benjalou wants to, uh, the film wants to see what I was doing between the years of 74 and, uh, uh, you know, 96, 98. Well, I was just, uh, it's an ordinary life, you yeah. know, so I didn't think there was anything in there, see. So, I, you know, after that, in 98, then, of course, you know, it has changed me or changed things. So perhaps people don't realize that Sugar Man was found... 15 years ago. Yeah, earlier. Yeah, exactly. And so I mentioned that because my album was also reissued in 08. So that was, it's really like four or five years, uh, five years ago, six years ago. Now, most people's career trajectory yes. doesn't look anything like yours. No, they no. either go right off and then they go off the oh, peak. Yeah. But you've, you've had this amazing uh, run. Some call it a fairy tale. And there's a sense of magic in the story. Uh, some of the uh, phenomena... Uh, I just that's that I think that is that, uh, <clears throat> but uh, however you look at it, I think it's it's uh, quite uh, it's winning those awards. So yeah. Mm. When you had he first heard from these South Africans about what they had feared or thought had become of you, oh yeah, it was well, crazy, right? <laughs> yes, it was. It was, uh, uh, but uh, um, I've been there now four times. Uh, one tour, I did twelve cities. Mm. Uh, Fifteen concerts and like that was oh, it's it's there's so much to see there mm -hmm. yeah, and and so that that's why it made the touring so so fun you know it's so much fun. Um, so yeah. So when you after all these years of sort of not performing, uh -huh. when you then got back up and then over the years since, but particularly that first time back up performing in '98, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, What's it like to get back up in front of an audience that oh, really wants yeah. to hear you? Well, a sizable audience. and Well, uh, music is a living art in that it's recreated. And so on stage, we, the band was rehearsed, and they were all South Africans. I have about a dozen bands in the globe, you know, uh, South African bands, Australian bands, English bands, West Coast, California bands, you know, it's like that. So I play with a lot of musicians, and it's, it's enjoyable. And they're all talented, so... Uh, they, it was ready, you know. It's so we we, we created it and just, uh, as you do at each last gig, yeah. But for you, it, you no, know, was it a situation of any nerves or cons like you? Oh, as to how? No, they made it easy. It was, it was uh, and I didn't know all this was going on. Some of the filming and things like that. Yeah. So I wasn't conscious of that. There's so much going. Uh, it's overwhelming the stimuli, and so yeah, so yeah. Now, if I can just ask you, there's a sure. couple of songs oh, that I, I think will outlive all of us oh, uh, by yeah, a long time. All right, well, let's see. And I, 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 and I just wonder if you can share a little oh, bit how about I, how it came sure. to you, sort of begin with. I'm one. yours. You know, ask me anything. You <laughs> well, know. thank you, thank you. The, the one that I think is maybe meant the most to people in South Africa okay. because of apartheid was, I think, I Wonder, right? I Wonder, Okay. Now, what, that was risque at the I, time. I, I, I sometimes feel the question by saying, I wonder, but I really don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, someone said that line already, so. No, it's good. <laughs> so how did, where did that song come from? I was just, it's an easy song. It's very, very easy. It's an A, you know, the chord of A. And the thing is, it's a very easy song. And, it, and it's done differently with different bands. Sometimes it's more uh, rousing or something. But it's, it's all just... Uh, and I've heard a girl do it with, a, and she does it with a sultry vocal. And so, it, again, it's 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 a, it's a movable art. So that's why someone else can take it and make a rendition of it and completely their own. But it's still basically the the uh, the same song. And for South Africans, it was wondering about their future with apartheid. <laughs> oh, for you, so. it was about different issues. Uh, different issues, but I try and hear the theme on each of them: mm -hmm. the war, violence, and it's violence, and and things like that. I think the, 
and with the reflective, I wonder, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, so. How about uh, okay. searching for, how about Sugar Man uh, it, itself? Uh, okay, Sugar Man. Sugar Man is a descriptive song, not a prescriptive song. It's uh, get your hugs, stay off of drugs, stay smart, don't start. It's a descriptive song of, 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 of uh, it's a theme, as I explained, like, uh, the Iceman cometh. You know, it's just uh, there. Are people are waiting for this idea and like that. Uh, and and then one that I had a search for utopia. You know, all you know, you know like that. That kind of thing. That's it. Yeah. How about uh, the final song? I'll ask you about. I could ask you about sure. Zillion, but I. But don't, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I thought it was such a beautiful song. Is yeah. I I think of you. Oh, you liked it. Okay, I thank it. you. I will. Well, it was a girl inspired, of course, you know, so that's what I mean about the boy-girl themes. It's, um, yeah, well, that's a ballad, and the thing is, uh, as to who, uh, a dear sweetheart, and the thing is, uh, yeah, and, oh, uh, uh, yeah, it was, um, again, a pensive song, I guess, and so, yeah, it's a boy-girl theme. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the, girl, most of the themes are boy-girl themes in, in music. Uh, uh, jazz and, and classical are instrumentations, efficiency on an instrument. Uh, so I like the protest song. Uh, you know, I like rock and roll. Yeah. If someone could only hear one Rodriguez oh, song, which I, song I, would you want them would to I hear? Would I recommend? Uh, I, you know, uh, I don't pick it out of a hat. You know? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know what to say. No, that. it's just like uh, the top what songs. I, I, and I like surprises in music in that you, you don't want to be able to have the same cuisine of music all the time. Yeah, I, I enjoy hearing a, even a nervous voice, mm -hmm. you know. Because later on, you hear it later, and it's so well honed. And that's the goal. It's just to be that effortless. So finally, so. Um, I have to just say, uh, or I have to ask, this, this journey, which is uh, now with this movie in particular, which uh -huh. has introduced you to probably more people than ever before, and people feel strongly about it. You've got a whole new wave of fans. Oh, yes. I'm well. sure it's affected your life, too. And so I just, you know, your day-to-day -day life. Can you tell me... Uh, how is what is your life like today, and are are you happy with it? Well, I, I do like to put it in in categories in a sense, you know, uh, <clears throat> and so I do it like this to frame it. There's political, there's business, there's personal, there's private, there's um, you know social. There's a different categories, uh, you know. Uh, so I think I uh, I think uh, well, I asked a famous guy in New Alec Baldwin. I says you're you're a famous man, and he says that's a double-edged sword. So I, I agree with that. And I think that you know privacy might be eroded a bit because people necessarily uh, want to say something like that, like that. But that's good. But but maximum security. I think you know. I think the Rupert Murdoch kind of uh, reporting that's kind of um, uh, unethical, as if it, anything else, you know. But unethical and <laughs> illegal too, you know, at some point. So. You know, and just coming down the road, I think, in that case, too. And it's in many cases. But, but basically, you're, you're a, a happy man, content man? I'm a fortunate man. You can have quite fortunate. And like I said, I'm a solid 70, so that it has happened. It's pretty amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank this you, This was an honor. Thank uh, you. And a pleasure today. Thank you. Sir.